Ben, can you share some tips that Joe gave you, not just about screenwriting in general, but about really pouring your heart into the script, just pouring your whole life into it? You know, one of the one of the main, uh, I think one of the things that Joe really taught me was, was trust your instincts. That was one of the biggest things as a writer, and and be true to the story, be true to yourself, uh, and put everything on paper. Or now these days, uh, on a laptop. <laughs> You know, so, yeah. What was that process like for you? Uh, it was hard. It was tough because the, the story's so personal. It took a long time. I mean, this has been over over 10 years. So it's, uh, you know, when you have something that's related to your family, about losing a brother and, and, and for me also losing a daughter, and it's all, every single one of these characters is someone that I grew up with or was related to my family or, or, and also the neighborhood. So it's... It's tough, it was a process. You f I found myself at times, even when I was writing the memoir, after a few pages, you get emotional, you know? It's really hard, but you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta work through it, and Joe was always there for me. Do you two almost have like a shorthand with each other, where you already know what he's gonna say and you've already answered it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, like with any, with any great friendship, uh, you know, you, you develop a, a way of speaking to one another, a way of interacting, and. You know, and 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 you know, uh, it's like it's like my brother and I. It's the same thing. You know, we have these we have these kind of this these inside jokes that that we're laughing at that other people find obnoxious because they they don't know. You know what I mean? Because that shorthand you know doesn't exist. They don't understand that. But there's only from you know almost 20 years of of knowing somebody and spending the time with them. So uh, there is that, and I think there is a. There is a, a, a like-mindedness in, in Ben and I as artists. I think we, we, we enjoy, we're striving for the same things. You know, we don't want this kind of, these kind of artificial experiences. And we wanted to make El Chicano something that was not only singular in, in its kind of vision, but also in its um, unique sense of family, unique sense, unique kind of emotional journey that the character goes on that, that I thought, uh, we both thought was very necessary. And that's kind of what we strove for. How usual or unusual is it for someone to spend, what, 20 years behind the camera, then getting their chance to direct? Or is that something that most people don't realize about Hollywood? Yeah, you know, um, it, it, it's not unusual because we, we are, uh, we are uh, storytelling, you know, even as, as, as early as being a stuntman to then becoming a stunt coordinator and a second unit director for Joe. Um, you know, you're, you're always, you know, I, I was very fortunate. I had I had some some people that really took me under the wing. Ron Stein being one of them, um, who was like a father figure when I first started in the business. And it was like, you know, you can only do this for so long as a young stunt guy. You know, it's like being an athlete. If you really want to have longevity, uh, you better learn lenses, learn story. And uh, and I and of course I fell in love with the fact of being a storyteller. So um, we were, you know, in some way you're always directing. You know, you're always coming up with ideas. And with the relationship I had with Joe, it's like this collaboration of when he was doing, whether it be the A-Team or the Grey, uh, uh, some of these films and, you know, sitting down and talking about storyboards and what needs to be shot. It was like you were in school, you know. We have a lot of screenwriters that watch our channel. What do you think is the number one thing screenwriters do to ruin a screenplay that they need to really work on? I think my... Uh, my thought on that, Karen, is that they they spend too much time overanalyzing it, and I think that hopefully this 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 newer generation of writers is moving further away from the kind of the uh, let's call it the Robert McKee story, uh, you know, like kind of this what I what I find um, uh, arguably uh, the dearth of good writing is this kind of is to try to plug it into this formulaic this must happen at this page that must happen at that page because i'll find you an example throughout the, the history of screenplays that where, where you where you can confound whatever it is that they whatever it is that's put out there and i find that very almost dangerously homogenizing a process which is by its very nature spontaneous and creative and should be and i think when you when a writer stops being spontaneous or stops allowing things to happen to the story is when it's dangerous. That that because it, it because in doing that also siphons off the individual nature of who, whomever that writer is. Um, <clears throat> and when you see it done, someone like Charlie Kaufman who writes, uh, you know, masterful, very unusual, very specific screenplays, and that's why, you know, he's regarded in the way that he is. So I think you've got to keep that in mind and never lose sight of the fact that you are an individual and that screenplay should live and breathe you. Great, excellent. Thank you, Dan. Cool.